dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the memorial of St. John Damascene, who was a priest in the time of the iconoclasts who wanted to suppress the veneration of sacred images. He lived in the latter part of the seventh century and the, up to the middle of the eighth century, so from six, about 675 to 750 AD. At that time, he lived in Damascus, which was ruled by a caliphate. By now, the Muslims had begun to spread from uh, Saudi Arabia, which, what's now Saudi Arabia, to uh, other parts of the Middle East. And so he was, uh, he followed in his father's footsteps as a counselor to the caliph. And so though he was Christian, uh, he was very much trusted, uh, and he was also strong enough in his faith to, to keep his faith and uh, not to hide or shrink from expressing it. The iconoclasts, actually, so this iconoclast, what, what does that mean? It means those who would destroy images uh, or suppress the veneration of images. And um, this may have arisen somewhat, or there, there was a little bit of that from the Muslims themselves who uh, forbid images. But it was even stronger coming from a certain heretical uh, movement among the, the Byzantine Christians and the emperor at the time. Saint John Damascene was perhaps the strongest opponent of this heresy or let's say defender of the proper understanding of the veneration of images. And this is what he said about it. It's, it's a very good quote that I'm taking from uh, Bert Gezi's journal. It's a, it's a year um, with the saints taking various uh, excerpts from their writings. And so this one here is St. John's uh, treatise on against iconoclasm, let's say. Since some criticize us for honoring images of our Savior, Our Lady, and other saints, let them remember that in the beginning, God created us after his own image. On what grounds, then, do we show reverence to each other unless because we are made after God's image? For as St. Basil says, the honor given to the image passes over to the prototype. Now, a prototype is the original from which the derivative is obtained. Didn't the people of Israel prostrate themselves before the tabernacle that bore the image of heavenly things? Didn't God himself direct Moses to make those images exactly according to the pattern revealed to him on the mountain? The use of images was not common in the Old Testament because it is foolish to try to give a form to the invisible God. But when God became man for our salvation, Many people saw the things that he did. He lived among us, worked miracles, suffered, was crucified, rose again, and was taken back to heaven. These things were written down for the instruction of us who were not yet alive, so that by hearing and believing, we might still obtain the Lord's blessing. But for the sake of those who were illiterate, the fathers permitted the depiction of these events in images as concise memorials. Thus, when we see the crucifix, we remember Christ's saving passion. We fall down to worship not the piece of wood, but the one who is imaged, Christ crucified. It's a very sound, clear, and simple argument 
explaining why it is not inappropriate to venerate images of holy persons, of the Lord God above all, Jesus Christ, and the others whom we venerate as a memorial because we are made in the image of God and uh, those who do God's will reflect some aspect of God himself. So it's not worshiping images, it's venerating the persons, the holy persons, imaged in those paintings or sculptures. So the iconoclasts wanted to destroy these great icons and um, St. John Damascene defended the practice, which for the illiterate may be one of the only ways they can really um, meditate and, and learn the faith. Today, we are living in an iconoclastic age again, where in certain places, such as our local state university, it's forbidden to display a religious image or a nativity scene at Christmas, which they don't even use the word Christmas. That's forbidden too, I think. It's winter holidays. Forbidden not out of a exaggerated, out of an exaggerated concern to prevent the corruption of the faith by worshiping images, you know, a, a degeneration into idolatry. That's not the concern now. The concern now is the total suppression of faith. It's not only are you not allowed to display an image, you're not really allowed to believe it. If you do, just don't tell anybody. And this is a policy that's proclaimed out of a false argument of respect for the sensibilities of those who don't have this faith, then all expressions of faith have to be suppressed, which is also in contradiction to our right to religious freedom and freedom of expression. But not everyone can see this. As our Lord said in the gospel today, blessed are the eyes that see what you see. I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. And he also told us, unless you become like a child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So brothers and sisters, uh, in our age of the suppression, not only of images, but of religion itself, let us remember the example of the great saints, like St. John Damascene, who did not balk at defending the truth. And because of his courage and his dedication to proclaiming that truth, uh, we today still enjoy the, the transmission of the faith and have a responsibility to future generations to also uh, ensure that they too have the freedom to worship and the freedom to express their faith. So as we prepare for Christmas and prepare our nativity scenes, let us ask the Lord for the courage to defend Christ in the public square, to proclaim this truth, to tell others what we see and what we have heard, that they too might believe. May the Blessed Virgin intercede for us. Praise be Jesus and Mary.